on Chris D'Elia, unfortunately, and not a good one if you're a fan of his. And it's looking like it's when it looks like it's over, it's actually not over. But then when it looks like it's really over, it's completely done. And I guess it's completely done, diddly done for, you know, the kid. Not the kid, he's not the kid, he's not Brian Callum, but it's legitimately done for Chris D'Elia, it looks like. If this, if, if any of these allegations are partly true, it's officially a rap. So, CNN is reporting that supposedly he's been accused of exposing himself now. So not only, you know, because I think the first allegations concerning him potentially going to different, you know, when he's on tour, he's aggressively trying to hook up with every girl that slides into his DMs or sli or kind of accidentally likes a picture or leaves a comment. Um, that's one thing. You can, if you want to, and you're a fan of his, um, uh, and you just, I don't know, you're just looking at this objectively, you could say, okay, hey, he's, uh, he's one of probably let's say five stand-ups in the world that probably looks the way he does right most stand-ups don't look like him right most stand-ups no not to be offensive look like Artie Lang right or Bert Kreischer that's the usual kind of standard stand-up comedian look so you know you can't blame him if he happens to be one of the only guys um that looks semi decent or attractive so you know he's uh, naturally going to probably attract a bit more of a female fan base and then of course considering his startup on vine and being famous on there first that's a younger crowd you could if you want to again it's a bit gross but you could if you want to explain the first set of allegations away but this sort of stuff is hard to really explain it's hard to rationalize uh, or to kind of even get to a point where you're thinking you know what this isn't true Again, if you're his friend, you should be doing that because you're his friend. But if you're not, this is hard to see him coming back from this if you're a fan of the Congratulations podcast. So let's see what the um, actual allegations are here. So this is by Chloe Melas for CNN. It says, for extra Megan Dr Megan Drust, Megan Drust or Drust Drust, what happened between her and comedian Crystal Leo is something that she hasn't talked about for nearly a decade already. You're already thinking, oof. This isn't one of those made up stories she has but kept herself for that long. It was 2011 when Drew and Delia when Drew said Delia asked her for a ride home from a Los Angeles restaurant where she had stopped to buy to meet Delia and a friend. That ride never happened. However, because when they got into her car, Drew said Delia unzipped his pants and exposed himself to her. Like, Jesus Christ. And that's a pretty but again, it's she said he said, we don't know if this is true, but you wouldn't come out of the blue and just put something like this out there if there wasn't some truth to it i'd imagine and this is again how do you explain this if you're a delia what do you say you were drunk he doesn't drink so it's like god damn it three women including drew another woman who has asked to remain anonymous for personal reasons um and laura viscerelli who first shared her account with los angeles times in june i think that's a girl's verified right yeah all told soon that celia exposed himself to them on separate occasions without their consent so this is even more damning because it sounds like they went back and basically the see, ran these allegations back to the f um, original accusers and they kind of um, verified that that happened to him as well. So like, God damn it, Chris. The leader denies these allegations and emphatically states that he has never engaged in sexual conduct with any woman outside her without her con consent. Andrew Brettler, the leader's attorney, told CNN. So he's he's keeping an attorney to his side by his side sorry but he hasn't necessarily come out and said nothing which might be a, a sound tactic considering the absolute shit show that brian can has subjected himself to right um post his allegations he hasn't necessarily covered himself in any kind of glory um even though he again he's innocent until proven guilty i guess if you're if you're looking at it from chris Lee's point of view maybe staying mum and kind of you know staying quiet about this is probably the best way to go forward especially if you have no way of explaining this like away like how can you right if someone says hey we all got in a car together we both remember that day and when we got in you unzipped your pants and exposed yourself to me how, what are you gonna say to her? what no it didn't happen so what did happen then like what is she kind of you know misremembering here um the leon an actor and comedian best known for his edgy stand-up comedy is it edgy i won't say that netflix specials was dropped by representative and streaming network and replaced him in an upcoming project after los angeles time published in report so it continued he said um the night allegedly exposed um himself to drew they had been at john's restaurant in west hollywood with a mutual friend drew said she had met the leah a handful of times before that night and considered him an acquaintance again this goes back to what i said earlier man we need to make 2020 or 2021 the year of dream women even kind of casual fling associates with respect like just ugh, 
God damn it. Um, Drews was 26 at the time, told CNN that she was getting ready to leave. The leader asked her for a ride home, which is always a bit of a warning sign, I guess, in that respect. I guess at the, at the time, they were probably, probably broke. It's 2011, and it's not Crystal Leah now. He probably is not as rich as he was back then, so maybe that's not a thing. But um, he said, I said, sure, this was really before everyone. I guess the only suggestion I'd say, if that was me and I was talking to somebody, a young lady and they told me they got to the position they'll probably say if you're going to drop drop a guy home maybe try and drop them off at a station or like you know at like a really public place don't offer to take them back home because i don't know some creepo dudes would take that as an invitation to invite them invite you back invite you back to theirs or for you to go back to their or for, you, for them to go back to your place it just isn't worth it you're better off just dropping them off at a public coach bus stop or something or a train station and then letting them kind of figure their way out from home there and they do too they they'll be all right i think if you're the way around obviously you know you'd have to take the risk to them dropping you home because you don't want to go back home by yourself but you know i think if that's a dude asking you you should be able to just drop them off at a station and if they say if they get weird about it that's probably a good warning sign too she said it continues said i said sure this was really before everyone was taking Ubers and I had marked him as safe, as she mentioned, which equals a non-threatening male. He was friends with some of my friends that I had met him before. Ugh, okay, damn, that's what you do. At least it's what I did. You mark certain people as safe. And again, that's the issue I have with all this sort of stuff, right? Um, it, 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 it wouldn't make it any more acceptable if he was doing it to strangers, but there is something quite... Um, disgusting about kind of breaking that level of trust between friends especially people you work in the same industry with i think there should be a little bit of a brotherhood sisterhood an unwritten rule where you kind of look after each other even if you do end up hooking up right there should be something where you can kind of sit down after the fact and be like hey i know that thing happened with us the other day the other week but we're going to see each other you know all the time we're going to be bumping into each other in the nightlife scene going out going to clubs you know attending festivals we need to be cool with each other so that i c i feel like i can kind of look out for you and you can look out for me right that kind of thing right so you can just be sort of like lookout friends which is nice isn't it because if you end up being somewhere and you're kind of on your own until your friends get there hey you can go talk to that guy you may have hooked up with but now you look out friends and you can hang out with each other but in the from the male's perspective there should be a bit more of a you should be steadfast and be like hey you know what I'm not touching that person. I'm not going near them in a kind of sexual manner because we're in the same industry and I want to maintain that level of professionalism. That should really exist. Or if you are going to go there, again, treat them nice. If that's not, you know, too much to ask. Um, it continues here. Uh, Drew said they walked into a car which was parked on a nearby street. But once they were inside her car, she said things took an unsettling turn. So, ugh. Again, top mark creeper behavior in it. Going from the crowds and suddenly turns into a monster. Which maybe is an explanation as to why someone like a Whitney Cummins has been so um, distant and kind of thrown Chris under the bus and publicly disavowed him and all that stuff. Maybe these guys knew this was the actual... And again, that, that's, that speaks to... Again, it's more of an illustration as to why that friendship was weird. Because if they, if they knew about this prior and they just didn't you know, say anything about it, or they didn't kind of put into one side and hey you got to fix up and stuff that is again isn't really good friendship in my opinion is it um but what do i know um it says yeah she continues she says we are both sitting there and i'm like where are we going and chris is leaning up against the door of the passenger side and looking at me in this really weird way and then he started to try to make flirty small talk god almighty that must be odd um, i was very confused because i was just didn't fight the moment then he took then he took down his zipper and asked me to touch him and I said, what are you doing? No. And because I wouldn't touch him, he started to masturbate. I couldn't believe it. Jesus Christos. Just imagine a scenario. You're just at a place where you want to go home. You get you offer somebody or, you know, you, somebody asks if you if you can give them a lift back home. And then suddenly, within the space of, what, 20 minutes, the person's ejaculating all over themselves. That's a madness. Just said at this point, she got out of the car. I got out and I have the door open and I walk out into the street and I'm saying, why are you doing this? And I remember him saying, you're defiling my car. No, and I remember and I remember saying, you're defiling my car. I didn't want to make him mad or upset because you're in survival mode, you know? She said he climaxed in his pants and then he zipped everything up and I said, what's wrong with you? <gasps> oh my days, this guy is a sicko, if true, man. Absolute certified S-I-C-K-O wow that's insane literally insane if again if true because that's what i mentioned before if 
if the if you can explain away the first accusations, right? He's too horny, he's trying to hook up with everybody that slides into his DMs, blah, 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 blah. blah. Sex addiction, cool. What's this then? This is just pure creeper, sicker behavior, no? It continues. She said, um, Delia got out of her car but continued to make her uneasy. I got back into my car. He shut the door and kind of just stood towards the hood and looked at me without saying anything. And then he just walked away. Drew saw seeing then she cried during her drive home. She said that a few days later she recounted what happened to two of her friends and they confirmed her account to seeing it. Now, I'm I'm sure this is just like basic journalism, but I'm this is pretty damning, right? The fact that it happened, because you I said earlier it could be she said she said he said, but she recounts what happened. She describes the events in detail to the CNN people. And then when they go to confirm with their friends, they confirm it. Now, obviously, if you're being cynical, you can say, hey, she could have easily just made up the story and then told her friends to back them up. But I don't know, man. When this story has to go on record, um, I'm sure the journalists will warn whoever they're calling to um, confirm the stories of the consequences if this goes on record and it's proven to be false. So, I, and again, I don't think there's many friends that would you know purposely lie on your name just so you could get you know a bit of five minutes of fame i don't think probably some friends will do that so i'm i'm kind of inclined to believe this did actually did happen which is really really shocking man like god almighty if you again i thought the first allegations were bad but i thought you know if you're able to kind of spin it in terms of having a sex addiction and stuff and especially if he's able to kind of um uh he's able to kind of prove that he's innocent of the accusations of grooming underage girls you can maybe see a way back for the guy but after this what is he gonna do like legitimate what's he gonna do uh it continues it said um Drews ran into delir again a few months later this time at a different restaurant in los angeles park called pink Toco. I've, I've heard her mention this actually on a few podcasts so i recognize that name she said, I'm standing there talking to my friends and I remember a guy's voice with his lips right on my ear say, you. I turned around, which is ironic considering the show he was on. I turned around and it was him. I just remember being very flustered and very uncomfortable. Imagine doing that to somebody and then having a nerve to come up behind him and whisper behind their ear. Like, it's disgusting. CNN spoke to a friend of Drew's who said she was with Drew's that day and confirmed the encounter with Delia. Again, another indicting one. It's definitely made me not want to go to, to comedy clubs, which was hard because I had a lot of my friends were comics. It really raised my guard and stopped going to events. I never went to anything alone after that. Now, I'm not too sure if that if that's just a, um, a consequence of the LA comedy scene. Because again, having spent some time in LA myself, um, especially when I went there last and hanging out in the party scene, you do get a feel that it is a bit of a blood-sucking scene right everyone's sort of like trying to link up with people with the most clout and essentially trying to play these weird power games and then if you're of course involved drugs and alcohol it gets a bit messy then of course when it involves opposite sexes and you know the whole attraction game it can get really messy really really quickly so i'm not too sure if that is kind of seeped into comedy clubs as well that sort of like you know seedy underbelly of la is sort of kind of there or if it's just a consequence of being in a comedy club with degenerates right because i'm assuming everyone that kind of is drawn to a career stand-up is drawn to you know to do something as scary as standing on a stage telling jokes it's going to be a bit messed up in the head they're not going to be all there um but this isn't an excuse is it because this is frightening stuff it continues i was really angry two of the women who spoke to cnn described in person encounters with delia that happened shortly before on the days he was set to perform a comedy show in close vicinity in which the city they lived at the time one of these women was a manager at the Kimpton School Scurford Hotel in Cleveland, Ohio, where Delia stayed as guest in March 2018. Delia was in town to perform at the Cleveland Masonic Theatre. According to, to tour dates on the theatre's websites, the woman, who was 24 at the time, asked to remain anonymous for fear of repercussions and said she received a call at the front desk with Delia one night around midnight. This is like his standard thing. He obviously does, not it? Whenever, but I guess to be fair to him too, I think this is what everyone does. If he does it, I think most of the dudes who are slanging dick, as Brendan Shaw would say, are you know using the tour as an excuse to go out to you know to go out to Pound Town. Um, I guess when you're at home and you're in your home state, it's hard to kind of creep out at night and link up with people. But when you're away doing a tour and performing for your fans, you can probably you know waste away the hours with some uh with some strangers i guess but god damn it man how embarrassing for everybody involved 
um, it's bad enough you're going around, you know, essentially, you know, cheating on your partner with everybody under, under the sun once you're on tour. But then to do so and then to go out there and abuse women is just even worse, isn't it? Um, so she was the overnight manager on duty at that time and she complained that the air conditioner, sorry, he'd complained the air conditioner in his room wasn't working, classic creepo trick, and that he needed assistance. Since her hotel electrician wasn't available at the time, she said she went up to his room to try to help. When I knocked on the door, he opened the door and he was completely naked. Oh my God god i was surprised and i was annoyed that i just came all the way up just so he could expose himself to me she said she immediately turned around without saying anything and went back to the front desk he's an abs this is mad behavior she called her fiance at the time and told him what allegedly transpired a few minutes later she said leah called the front desk again he told me i need to come back upstairs to help with his air conditioner and i told him i would need to wait for the to following morning so what happens when you call your fiance about something because imagine if that's me I'm coming down with a baseball bat and caving this guy's head in me. But I'm assuming if, you know, she's probably, hey, don't I don't, don't mess up my job. I, I worked hard to get this, but God almighty. Um, so he told her to go back there again. Um, that night, sorry, so he told me to I need to go back upstairs to help with his air conditioner. And I told him that he would need to wait for the electrician the following morning. And I hung up. That night and the next morning, the woman also told co-workers what transpired with Dalia. Celine also spoke to these individuals who recalled her account. So he just did that and then didn't even offer an apology, didn't try and explain it away, like nothing. He just kind of continued asking for air conditioner help. What? Hoping that she kind of changed her mind between the moment that she opened the door and got that fright and went back downstairs. Madness. The woman said she'd never seen any of Delia's work before this day, um, but she had previously alerted um, alerted that he would be a guest in the hotel which she said is customary with all high profile guests she said she googled his picture once and she went back to the front desk and confirmed that the naked man at the door was indeed Delia wow several hours later when she when her shift was over she had reported the incident to her manager and let it known that she included um, the incident in her MOD manager on duty report oh my day it's a wrap for Chris man but again I don't, ugh, part of me is like Again, this is journalism and you have to expose creeps and I'm sure for the women involved, they need to have a bit of closure and feel as if that, you know, justice is going to be served one way or the other, whether it's a civil suit or something. I'm not too sure how they're going to proceed in this through the courts. But there's a part of me that's thinking like, how much damage is going to do to Chris as a person himself? Like, you don't want this guy to kind of take his own life right off the back of these allegations because his career is essentially eviscerated it's over right even if some of these allegations are not true and some are made up but just this plus this alone will be bad enough but then when you include the stories prior to this it's just you can't see a way back for the guy in it and you can only see the truth in some of these statements but again i don't know to what purpose it serves to no, I wouldn't say to kind of expose this because you have to, but I don't know, man. There's a part of me that's like thinking if it transpires tomorrow that he, unfortunately, let's say touch wood doesn't happen, he hangs himself or something, what then? Do you know what I mean? Like, I guess this is enough that the story is out there. Everyone knows what he's about, allegedly. But Jesus Christos. This again explains why he didn't say nothing, I guess, why he's completely keeping mum about this. Um, we really didn't talk about it after i told him um but i was made to feel like it wasn't a big deal because this isn't really an uncommon thing to happen in the hotel business what it wasn't it just happened to be the famous person who did it at this time okay cool i didn't want to draw attention to it because i also wanted to keep my job understandable they came to the hotel group which manages the property told silly in an incident in a statement no incidents of guest misconduct were reported by guests or staff at kimpton hotel during the stay at kimpton so why did she oh, that's interesting she said she wrote it in her log, but they're saying nothing was reported. That's odd, isn't it? Um, no instances were reported. Um, at Kimpton, the safety of our guests and our people is our top priority. We investigate all instances of reports that are filed. However, it is our policy not to disclose identifying information about our employees or guests outside of law enforcement or regulatory authorities. Okay, that makes sense. They just want to protect their asses. They don't want to get sued. So they continue to say, Laura Vitelli, Vitelli told CNN that Delia exposed himself to her and her friend in 2015. She was 19 at the time. She had been excited to meet Delia, she said, after one of his comedy shows of the Levity Live in West what at West Nyack with New York. After taking photos with him, her and her friend Delia exchanged numbers with them and expect sending an invitation to a party. Victoria said he gave us the address and we went. It turned out to be his hotel. <laughs> 
Oh, this guy's a sicko, man. Stand the sicko move. It's only recorded that when they walked into Christian's room, the lights were off and he was watching cops and eating a bowl of shrimp scampi. She said that Leah asked them to put their cell phones in a basket upon entering the room. There was no sign of a party at all. He said he was going to make us drinks and then here and I were both a little nervous just because it really didn't look like he was about to throw a party. There was nobody else there. Feeling a little bit nervous and deceived, she, she, they said she accepted the drinks. Again, girls, my young girls, why they do this? When you, if your gut's telling you something's wrong, just leave. God damn it! Why would you accept these drinks? You never even know what's in them. Um, feeling a little bit nervous and deceived, she said she accepted the drinks. Viterelli noted that Delia did not pour himself one because he's sober. Um, Viterelli said Delia then sat between each of them on the couch and almost immediately put one of each of their hands down. That was our backside and side groping us. Vittori said she looked at her friend who looked frightened and then made up an excuse to leave. God almighty. He got up with us and followed us to the door and said, Are you sure you want to leave? And he pulled up his he pulled out his penis when it was fully erect. Vittori told CNN it was very uncomfortable for both of us and we knew we had to get out of there as soon as, as we left as fast as we could. Her friend who confirmed the incident asked that her name not be included in the story to fear backlash against Chris Lee's fan base from his fan base after Terry and other women posted allegations about him on social media in June the leader released a statement in the TMZ that said um, among other things all my relationship with women have been legal consensual blah 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 we know about that one Peter has hired a lawyer Jay Ellenwinger and is pursuing a civil complaint that's big news isn't it we haven't really heard any news in terms of um, lawsuits so that's a big one that probably explains why Chris Lee has been completely quiet um, she says Laura, Viter Laura Viterelli has shared horrific stories about how she suffered at the hands of Dalia um, and his team while the legal system can never undo what has done we will work tirelessly to provide her and the other women who represent a measure of justice as we were to stop this predatory behavior she said he would expose himself in front of other women. Fellow comedian Bill Dawes, wow, it's a dude saying this, throwing him under the bus or, you know, alleging something, was told with Delia, told CNN that Delia has a history of exposing himself to both men and women. He has a very proud of his body and he would expose himself in front of guys um, he was on the road with and other male comics. Um, and he would do this kind of joke. He would expose himself in front of other women when other guys were in the room with him. A well-known female comedian who said she's been friends with Leah for over 10 years also spoke to CNN and, met and asked him to remain anonymous. Is that Whitney? Don't know. Yeah, I said we used to hang out at one-on-one -on -one cafe after sets and they would... And the way he would speak about women was degrading, disrespectful and demeaning to women. Yeah, but that one's a bit of a stretch though, isn't it? Because that one's a bit hypocritical because you were his friend for 10 years and now you're coming out and saying something, do you know what I mean? I'm not really buying that one. Uh, this community who did not witness Delia exposing himself, but had heard accounts from others and Doors both uh, said they were unsurprised when the initial allegations surfaced. It said, there are a lot of people who will say when the Me Too stuff happened, we were all thinking, what about Delia? Um, we, he just seemed really uh, prolific. He just seemed to really prolificate with the way he would go after women, sleep with women, expose himself to women. Jesus Christ. Drew said that she hopes sharing her account publicly will empower other women in the entertainment or other industries uh, who may have experience similar um, to stop blaming themselves. You didn't ask for this, Drew said, even if you'd liked someone, um, but if they crossed the boundary and made you feel like you couldn't say no, it's not okay. It was lucky to be older and been around the block with people trying to abuse their power in the industry and I was not going to accept it. Jesus Christ, mate. That is some damning stuff. Again, even if 5% of that story is true, 10% of that story is true, it's a rap, isn't it? Especially for somebody, and you know it's a rap because he's never been Louis C.K. He was never the kind of independent, grassroots, hand to mouth, or, you know, customer, maybe apart from his podcast, but he always kind of felt like he's maybe similar to Brian Callen in that respect. Like he wanted to be accepted by Hollywood. You know, he's one of his dreams, I think, prior to to all these allegations was that he wanted to be an action movie star in the in the, in the vein of a Keanu Reeves or Tom Cruise and those kind of dudes um but that's not going to happen now is it obviously my friend unless you do your own movies um and I'm not too sure somebody like him that's ambitious as he is hard working as he is will be happy just doing stand-up comedy behind a paywall on Patreon like that probably isn't going to be the way forward so I don't know what's your next step after this isn't it like he's probably going to get sued up into his eyeballs mounds amount of money payouts and stuff to kind of help this stuff goes away and then what 
Jesus Christ, Crystal, yeah, man. Shocking. But yeah, let, let, let me know your thoughts, man. What do you think of this development? Do you think these allegations are true? Um, <laughs> and um, how do you go forward with this? Like, how do you go forward with this? How do you go forward? Let me know in the comments down below.